Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Crazy Amazing Humans podcast, where we highlight everyday humans doing crazy, amazing things. People just like you and me who utilize their time, talents, and resources to make the world a better place. I'm Katrina Carlson. And I'm Jefferson Denham. We want to thank you so much for joining us from wherever you are on this crazy, amazing planet. We believe it's more important than ever to stay connected, stay positive, and stay active. And if you agree, whew, you are in the right place. Well, hey, Jefferson, I do agree. And <laughs> for anyone out there who is a mom, quote, unquote, mm. biological or otherwise, for a child, an adult, or basically if you've taken on the role of parenting someone in your life, well, this episode is dedicated to you. Our guest today is Sharin Yadigar. She is a mother of four girls and founder creator of LA Mom Magazine. Now, before creating LA Mom Magazine, Sharin was a journalist at several major publications, including the Los Angeles Times and the managing editor of Beverly Hills Weekly. Los Angeles Mom Magazine empowers moms to feel self confident about the decisions they make for their families. LA Mom Magazine features influential doctors, educators, psychologists, and more yeah. mm -hmm. who write columns about difficult issues parents face nowadays on a daily basis. Sharin, who you are going to love, is going to share all her practical tips and advice for moms at every stage of mothering. Uh, by the way, not just for moms, but speaking as a dad, I found this to be really helpful as well. Absolutely. It's so true. It's for anyone parenting. So let's get right to our conversation. We truly appreciate you. And we want to remind you that you, you are, are crazy, crazy amazing. amazing. This is Malika Chopra from episode 23, and you're listening to the Crazy Amazing Humans podcast with Katrina Carlson and Jefferson Denham. Hey, everyone. We are here with Sharin Yadigar from LA Mom Magazine. Hey, Sharin. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so I want to start by establishing your background, Sharin. It's amazing. And I I know you. So we're, we know each other. We're friends. But could you tell us a little bit about yourself for our audience? Oh, my gosh. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored and thrilled to be here with the both of you. Love your podcast. So it makes me feel really special to be here today. So thank you for highlighting me. I am a mama of four girls. I am married to my soulmate, um, madly in love with my husband of 21 years. Mm -hmm. I created a um, online magazine called LA Mom Magazine 12 years ago with the birth of my third child because I was trained as a journalist. I have my master's in journalism from the Annenberg School at USC, but you know, I, I worked as a journalist for many years and kind of wrote on my own and everything. But when I had my third, I said, wait a minute, there's nothing out there for moms. Like there was no expert advice. There was no genuine advice. Like everywhere you went was just like rogue memorization. Like, oh, I'm an expert. Let me tell you what to do to potty train your child. But nothing really felt real and authentic. And so I wanted to create a platform where I would bring in experts, but real experts who I really connected with and really knew were real experts, right? I just didn't find them on the web and bring them out there. Like I either used them personally or friends did, or I knew them from some way so that it would really be a trusted source for parents. Um, and I created LA Mom Magazine and it's like my little baby. And from that came a talk show called Moms Matter, where up until the pandemic, we were doing great interviews, you know, everything from Malika Chopra, who I know you also interviewed, who I yes. love, to, yes. you know, again, pediatricians and doctors and just moms who are making a difference in the world. Mm. And um, that's really my story. I'm I'm a family woman. I love my family. I'm so lucky to have both my parents alive. I spend a lot of time with them and my kids and my brother and his new baby. And I spend a lot of time trying to do good because I can financially now. I'm in a place where I can give back. And I love the fact that I can get involved. My husband and I are involved in a lot of different philanthropy work. And my girls are following in our footsteps. And that just makes me feel like wow, okay, I'm doing something right. It feels so good. 
And you are. You isn't are. that what most parents wish, right? Kat, uh-huh. Kat, Katrina and I talk about this. Like if you lead by example, then you inspire the next generation and you and your husband are doing that, which is, by the way, uh, happy Mother's Day. Yes. Thank you. This happy is Mother's, Mother's Day, Day episode. Yeah. So uh, you talked a little bit about this. So I just want to dig a little bit deeper. Oh, I have one more aside. <laughs> four daughters, four <laughs> Don't it's, you know, Sharin, that when you have more than two, they outnumber you. Um, Just say, and, okay. And can I say, as a mom with two girls and one boy, four girls is a whole thing. So we and, will be presenting you with okay. a medal at the end of this. <laughs> she event. needs a medal of honor. All right, for four so girls. let's. <laughs> they are all amazing, by the way. Oh, I awesome. love this. So, I love congrats. this. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about LA Mom Magazine. You were mentioning how you saw the need. You saw that you know. Okay. I'm a mom and I'm looking for resources. I don't want to answer your question for you. Let me ask the question. Why did you specifically create LA Mom Magazine online? And what do you hope LA Mom Magazine would provide for moms? Well, I would hope that it would create community. And I I was really, my intention with creating it was that it would be a safe place for moms to be able to just scroll through, find what they wanted, ask each other questions and come together. You know, nobody really reads papers anymore. At least I don't. I don't know if you guys do anymore, but I thought I'm not going to waste the money on printing a paper. But like you're at the nail salon, you can scroll through and you can like get the, you know, the things you need. And then, Mm -hmm. oh, you'll see, oh, who wrote this article? Let me reach out to them. And now with Instagram and Facebook and all these different, you know, avenues through social media, I thought moms could really reach out and find this great community, you know, and, and absolutely that makes so much sense. And community is so important. It's something that we're trying to create with crazy, amazing humans as well as a community of people who care, who want to do some kindness, whatever that is in their local or whatever. So well done. And I really, you really do create that with, with your magazine. And I love the name. And what's amazing about LA mom magazine is it really does extend past Los Angeles and any mom can garner incredible knowledge and insights from your articles and your resources which I wanted to bring up that you have some articles and resources that you've highlighted. I mean, so many over the years, but which ones do you think stand out that really make a difference and you've you've gotten feedback or have made a difference in lives of moms? Wow, there's been so many over the the 12 years. I think I'll go a little more recent maybe. Okay. Um, I've done a few articles and interviews with a woman who talked about porn, um, which is that topic that kind of scares parents, right? Everybody's Mm -hmm. like, oh my God, how do I, how do I talk to my kids about porn? And she's amazing. She created this community. I'm sure you know about it, Katrina. I think she's probably been to Brentwood School as well. She's so great. Dr. Gail Dines. And so she's created something called Culturally Reframed, and she just helps parents deal with step-by-step how to talk to your kids about porn so that they're educated, so that they don't look to porn for the answer because now we see what's happening, right? And and there's so much violence in porn. And she says to have this conversation really young. And when I first heard her say that, I said, well, how young? She said, you know, dinner table talk as young as like six, seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. You you don't have to call it porn, right? But you start to have these conversations. And so as kids become teenagers and become sexually active, they don't look to pornography to think, oh, this is how my relationship should look, right? Right. Which is the scariest thing in the world. And so a lot of parents reached out. A lot of parents of boys actually reached out and said, thank you so much because this changed my life. It changed my life. I'm having conversations with my son that I felt very uncomfortable having. And he really doesn't look to porn anymore, thankfully, right? So he's having good, harmonious sexual relations with his, you know, girlfriend or or whatever it is that's going on. So so that was a big one. The the porn industry is just, I mean, we could get into a whole conversation about that, but that article really changed a lot of people's lives. It was, it was a, a big winner. Mm. Absolutely. And that's what you all seem to do. What I've experienced is you kind of bring things that people, it might you're not necessarily looking for that. Wait, that's interesting. Porn, I've never really thought about it, but yet I know the cover of Time Magazine just a couple of years ago was about a group of like around 28, 30 somethings that were saying, I got addicted to porn in high school when I was in class with my computer open and now it's really ruined my life and we want to speak out on behalf of other kids because of the internet that we can see these things. So, uh, you know, that it's so easily accessed and you know there's a whole kind of way they bait you into going deeper into porn. So that's a in really interesting article. It is. Uh, and, and can highlight. I just interject really quickly that, uh, you know, I'm a parent as well. And so this topic, Sharin, uh, well, the topic of sex in general, I don't know about you guys, mm-hmm. but when I was young, my parents were like, 
keep it in your pants. I mean, that that's all, that was my sex advice. <laughs> yes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so the fact that you are allowing, as you were mentioning, you're not alone. And we all have these struggles and thoughts. It's like, where do I go to understand this topics? The fact mm-hmm. that you're creating that space for that. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. I have a question for you. Now you said your parents are both alive. There's a lot of people watching uh, a lot of our audience who maybe did not have a great role model as a mom could be. Do you have insights that you received from your mom? Because it's, uh, I don't want to, you know, extrapolate too much here, but I'm, I'm guessing you had a decent mm-hmm. relationship with your mom. So if that was helpful to you when you became a mom, and if people don't have that, how can you create your own thing? Right. So I'm actually crying, like, because I'm my mom, oh. my everything. I was the luckiest girl in the world to have an incredible mom. Sorry, I wow. got emotional. It's wow. Mother's Day, right? We get emotional. Yes, Mother's Day. this is what moms do. We love moms our get moms. emotional. And, mm-hmm. and I hope that we can all feel emotional about love in our life because not everyone is lucky enough to have it. And so I did grow up with a very, very loving mother and father. Um, and love always came first. So we obviously had structure and discipline and, and values and traditions and everything that we followed, but with love. So everything happened with love. And my mom raised me to believe that there was nothing I couldn't do. And I grew up, you know, in an Iranian Jewish family where women, you know, by, <laughs> oh my God, how many hundreds of years really were the homemakers. So, so women, for the most part, were not to go get educated. They were to stay home and take care of the kids and the family and so on. My mom was not that way. So my mom, when we came here from Iran, she didn't have a choice. She was very educated and went to London and became educated. But when we came to the States, she had to work because financially we had lost everything and left everything behind. So I had a working, you know, working parent, both parents were working and I saw her 10 hours a day working to make ends meet so that she could put food on the table. And she said to me, you go get educated, put your education first, and you make sure no matter what happens, get married and have lots of kids, you have to have a career for yourself and you need to have a name for yourself and let any man know that you can stand on your own two feet. And that was always, always the messaging. And so here we are now with four girls and the same, you know, and it goes and you pay it forward. I say that to, to women who, who don't have that role model as a mother, right? There are so many other role models out there, right? And if it's not your family member or if it's not a friend, thank God we have so many great organizations out there today that can lend you these incredible role models like Shiro Rise, who is a great interview for you one day if you'd like. She's amazing. They've created an organization right here in our neighborhood where Mm -hmm. it's a mentorship program. And for so many of these girls who don't have a role model, you can step up and you can sponsor this child and you can be that role model for for someone. And so I think there are so many ways now we're so lucky, right? With social yes. media and the internet that you, you can find it. There is community. And if anyone needs, needs help with that, please reach out to me because I, I, I feel very passionate about it. That's fantastic. And yes, and it's something to feel passionate about because not everyone has a mother that affected them positively. I mean, what a blessing that you did. I had a lovely mom. My mom was a mixed bag, but love her. And we are very close to this day. And I'm so blessed that she's still alive. So happy Mother's Day to my mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, there's there's a lot of people encouraging women, encouraging mom. There's a lot of talk now, uh, encouraging moms to take care of themselves, the whole self-care movement. And it's, so it's not, you know, take care of yourself and your kids, but don't forget about yourself because we know it's easy to lose ourselves when we become a mom. So I thought, how about, I, you just have so much good advice and insights. What is your best advice for new moms trying to find that balance and what what should they be doing how should they prioritize oh my gosh new moms (laughs) i love you we're here for you it is the hardest time of your life it is so (laughs) difficult to be a mom Mm -hmm. i know personally for the first 10 years of motherhood I did not prioritize my self-care at all. Mm. And I had terrible migraines and I was not, I I was not, I was not serving myself. I was not serving my family. I was a big mess. Mm. When I created LA Mom Magazine, actually, it forced me to look within and to say, hey, if I'm going to be a role model out here for all these mamas, how am I taking care of myself? Mm. And I do one thing for myself every single day. So for new mamas out there, I don't care if you don't have help. It doesn't matter if you're all alone. If you're a single mom, you make sure that you do one thing for yourself every day. It might just be pouring yourself a cup of coffee 
and watching Netflix. It might be running on the treadmill. It might be calling a friend and talking to them for 30 minutes, but you need to do one thing for yourself every day to serve you. So I've made sure that no matter what happens in my life, I do one thing and I tell my kids, like, I'm so sorry. I, I'm working out right now. Just leave me alone. Like I'm in my, mo I'm in my zone. Just let me be. And something else that I found really, really serves all moms, all human beings is when you wake up in the morning take three minutes to do whatever kind of meditation, breathing, gratitude that serves you. It looks different for everyone. Three minutes. Don't start your day with your phone. Just three minutes of like quiet gratitude and it changes your whole day. And that to me is self-care because you're taking the time for yourself and it makes self, a huge difference. Self-care. That is just that so is powerful. I just wanted to add on that something that I really like about what you're saying is by saying, I'm going to take one thing every day, you're having people be intentional and to like recognize that at least I did one thing for myself today. When you are like, your hair is getting pulled out you're like going everywhere. You go, Oh, but I did do that one thing, or I'm going to do this one thing. I'm going to look forward to that. This is going to be my time and my space. It's so good, you know, to that, that may, I think really helps you feel some kind of gratitude for yourself and for something that is going to be for you that day, whether it is, maybe you just get that three minutes in, but that three minutes is so great. And I will say that I do something like that but sometimes I'm not even out of bed when I do it I'll wake up and I'm I'm not ready to get up and I will spend that three minutes you know uh, breathing thinking of things I'm grateful for and maybe setting an attention for the day so uh, those are both really great ideas honestly if we could all do everyone moms and dads every single day wow I think we would all be uh, healthier and more balanced and Jefferson, Sharid, what, yeah ahead. what I was just going to say is I really love that you are self-care is a big deal I wish you were around when my mom was alive and oh. raising children because I just find that this is just so powerful what you're sharing and may I say it seems like you are modeling for your children it's okay to ask for some time where I can just recuperate, recharge. So Absolutely. you're not just saying it, you're modeling it. All right. Yes. So speaking of recharging, sp speaking of meditating, taking deep breaths, can I segue awkwardly into <laughs> about parents of teenagers? So we just Ooh. talked about, <laughs> we just talked about new moms, all oh, the cuddly babies, aren't they sweet? Well, these kids grow up to be teenagers. <laughs> Which can be a yes, really difficult age. And social media, of course, we know is amplifying a Wait, lot of these. Jefferson, it was so easy. I mean, honestly, teenagers <laughs> are nothing. Well, I've heard I, Kat, I I've heard talking. I've heard others say that okay, it was yes. really tough for them. <laughs> Well, that's because Katrina has three incredible children. <laughs> so for her, kind. it was like, boom. You no, know? no, I no. Had, I had two and they were teenagers once upon a time. So let's just say, okay, they're lovely. Yes, anyway, they're amazing. So, yeah. Uh, now, let's get back to the subject at hand. I'm sure our audience is going, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best advice for parents in that space? Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. I think I have three things to say. One is that I always remain your mother, not your friend. I will not be your friend, which means I don't need to be cool to please you. I am your mother and I love you. We can get into that later. Amazing. My second thing is, listen, I think sometimes we spend way too much time preaching to our teenagers and talking and they tune us out. They don't listen to what we're saying. So just try to listen, because if you listen, sometimes all they want to do is vent and let it out and they're, and they're done and they're over and miraculously they become normal again. So <laughs> I really have just been listening and sitting very quietly as much as I want to just be like, what are you talking about? I'm like, hmm, yeah, that's really interesting. That's great. Very calm. And do you stroke your chin like this? When you listen? <laughs> <laughs> and the third thing with teenagers is that they do have to have fun, right? Everything doesn't have to be so serious. And like I said, I'm not your friend, but you know, I'm your mother and we can have a lot of fun together. So I'd like to let them know that, yes, we can have fun. My fun isn't going to be, you know, smoking a joint with you or, you know, <laughs> or, or, or getting drunk with you, but my fun will be a really great building, a really great relationship with you. So that's kind of what I've been doing. I mean, I have two teenagers. I still have a 12 and 10 year old. So far, so good. They are, they're, they're very respectful. I think because of the listening, they feel like they're being heard. And I think that's really important, right? Because yes, definitely want to be heard. 
Mm -hmm. And the second thing is they never cross the line with me because they know that I'm their mother and I'm not their friend. So with that being said, they know that if they ever get into a bad situation, we'll be there in the drop of a pin. Our phone is on. You're at a party. We understand that teen party culture and it can be yes. really uncomfortable and really awful. You're not jiving. Things aren't good. Call us. We'll be there immediately. It doesn't matter where we are and what we're doing. And if we're not available, they have a list of safe people that they can call that can come and get them. So I think that is really important for, for parents to, to have with that conversation with their kids. I will never get mad. You drink too much. Your friends drink too much. They're always safe in our home. We're not going to be mad. It's okay. Just do the right thing and we'll pick you up. So, you know, it's that I'm your mother again. I'm not your friend. I'm not going to be the house where you all come and get hammered. But if you do go and have a great time, I will come and pick you up if you're not feeling well or if you don't feel safe or, you know, whatever is happening. No questions asked ever. No questions asked. You're safe. We'll come and get you. I just think safety is the most important thing when you have teenagers because so much can go wrong. And yes. I just always want the kids to know that we are there. We will always be there for you no matter what. And, and it's just a very clear dialogue. That's excellent. Wow. I mean, you said everything that I think and want to be and try to be with our teenagers and our kids. And yeah, you need, they need to have fun too, because, you know, a lot of these kids are working really hard in high school mm -hmm. and, you know, they're just so busy with activities, so busy with academics. There's so much pressure. Now they've gone through basically two years of, of this COVID quarantine, you know, kind of awkwardness, masks, you know, getting tested all the time, at least here in LA, it's just been a lot. And so you, you kind of, I think as a parent, you look at them sometimes and you're like, wow, are they having like the high school or the, you know, the adolescence that I had, are they having that fun and you want them to have fun? So yes, there is a party culture. I don't know. I guess it's happening still. Do you have any other things to expound upon any other things with like, let's say teens going to parties, how to strike that balance? Sure. Uh, what that looks like. <gasps> so my, my eldest, she didn't get the parting, right? Because it hit junior and senior year for her. We're gone. Wow. Um, which is a blessing in a sense as a parent, yeah. a first child, because you have yeah. to, thank God I didn't have to deal with that. Right. That's true. That is true. That is, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> but now with Bella, with my second, I feel like things are open and they're open more than ever because people are so tired of being locked up. And yeah. there's, there's a party I hear about every Friday, Saturday night. And so our rule is you need to tell me where you're going. I need to know whose house it is. Originally, I was like, can I have the, the, the parent's phone number? And she was like, mother, you cannot do that. What are you talking? We cannot call the mother. They don't even go to my school. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> That's true. Uh, so I don't make that phone call. I would like to, but I don't make the phone call. But I do ask the other moms to make sure that, yes, are they really all going together? What's going on? My kids all have a curfew. So, you know, 1230, they have to be home. Uh, obviously, there's an Uber running late. Something's happening. They let us know. We're sorry. We're running late. But there's curfew because nothing really good happens after midnight. So I figure if they leave by 12, that means they're home by 1230. And that's it. And she's like, Mom, you're so mean. Everyone else, nobody else has a curfew. And I said, I am so mean. I'm so sorry. If you want some of your friends to come here, if you still still have party in you, you guys can hang out at the house. Always okay with everyone being here, but I'm so sorry. Like midnight is your curfew. Cause I really do believe that if you set, you know, limitations on your kids and they know these are the rules, you just got to follow the rules. Right. And, and they're so, totally reasonable. The reason and, yeah. and they're totally reasonable. And by the way, they're all going to drink for the most part. Like I, I'm not going to tell you not to drink because I know that you're going to drink. Um, I do tell my kids not to do drugs. I tell them that drugs will lead them down a very scary path. I think that for parents who have anyone in the family who has any addiction problems, then I think that is a great conversation to have so that the kids do not even begin drinking because mm -hmm. you don't know where that will go. Right. And, yes, yes. and so we're lucky we don't have that in our family. So we don't mm -hmm. have the conversation telling our kids not to drink. I'm being completely honest. I know kids yeah. should be 21 when they're drinking. Yeah. But we know that high schoolers are going to go and drink. Mm -hmm. So all I say to them is, if you're planning on drinking at a party, please make sure that you pour your own drink from a bottle and you do not take a drink from anyone. Because unfortunately, we're hearing crazy stories, even in high school and a lot in college, about kids who are being roofied. And so for me, again, it comes to safety, right? You're going to do it. Just be safe about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Or if you really need to have a drink, have a drink at someone's house before you go. Because mm -hmm. they all have fake IDs and they're all buying alcohol. And that's just the truth, right? Yeah. Some parents don't want to, you know, admit it, but that's what's happening. And so it's like, at least just be safe about it. Because the worst, worst thing that could happen is, God forbid, your kid gets drugged. 
You don't want them to learn the hard way. No, no. Boy, no. party culture, man, that is scary stuff. And uh-huh. I think it sounds like, Sharon, this is all part of your philosophy of, you know, I'm your mom, not your friend. And so that's why when we talk this way, I'm not trying to be your buddy. I'm trying to kind of give you a sense of, I, you know, you have a wise way of speaking, I can tell. And so you're letting your kids know, hey, I know the ways of the world. I'm not sticking my head in the sand. I know there's drinking or whatever, but given that, pay attention to what's your surroundings and so forth. So I have a two-part question for you. I'll try to make it brief. For those of us, I think I shared just briefly earlier that my mom has passed away. Single mom, Kat, and I have a similar circumstance there. She was my hero. And so first question is, what advice do you give people whose moms have passed on? Mother's Day can be hard for that reason. Mm. And then if you could talk a little bit more about your personal philosophy in parenting your children. So I think for those who have lost their mothers, it's really, Mother's Day is really difficult. I just lost my grandmother. And I know that for my mom, it's going to be a very difficult Mother's Day, no matter how old they are, right? They can live to be 100 years old, still your mom, and it's still painful. I think the one thing we talk about in our family is carrying on their traditions and their spirit. And I think that's what warms your heart and makes you feel good, right? So that they might not physically be with you on Mother's Day or for birthdays or special occasions. But if you carry on their traditions, they will be with you forever. And we all have traditions that we share with our mothers, things that just put a big smile on our face. So that would be my my advice to everyone who's missing their moms this Mother's Day. I know it's, it's hard. Our moms are really special. It's a lot. And if you're a mother, to be able to enjoy Mother's Day with your children, right? And to really relish in that joy of being a mother and being able to do all those great traditions that your mother passed on and to create new ones. And to change the things that you may not have really liked about your mom, because we don't all love everything about our moms, but we always hope, right? Each generation just gets a little bit better. Mm -hmm. We're a little bit more mindful, a little bit more intentional about the things we do. And for those of us who are lucky enough to spend the time with our kids, to be at home and to raise them, we have a lot more time to think about our actions, right? Because we're not so busy, you know, running, you know, working from nine to six, coming home, making dinner. If we have the freedom to spend more time with our children, I think we have this huge benefit of really looking within and thinking, how can I make this better? How can I serve better? How can I be a better person and a better mother, which will then make my children better parents, you know, as a result. Yes. So I think that's that's the message to those who are missing their mama this year. That's I'm sorry. And your second question was, what is your personal philosophy? Do you have like, you know, you're thinking, okay, every time I'm going to do this, this is my parenting philosophy as a mom. Right. So I think we have a parenting philosophy that leads with love and respect. And if you have love and respect, everything else kind of falls into gear. Um, I don't think honestly that my girls have ever disrespected me. I think that there's a little fear probably in, 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 in them. Um, and that's okay. I think a little fear is good, but our philosophy in parenting is really love and respect. And if you have those two things, I really believe that everything else will fall into place. I I love it. That's that's fantastic. And I do, I, I agree with that. And I love because you you mentioned being intentional about how you handle things. And I was gonna say something that my husband always uh loves to say is um expectation with an explanation. And that sounds like something you really do too. It's not just that you're setting an expectation of how they should be or how you what you want them to do, but you do explain why. And I think obviously communication is so important and you are amazing at explaining explaining all of these these things that you've been saying so far. So thank you so much. Something I noticed because I do follow you is that you made your list of five intentions for 2022. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we know you're a mother of four girls. Wow. I'm (laughs) always so impressed. And you have a junior in high school, as do I. So you're looking for college. I mean, you're just all over the place, right? With all these ages. You said they range from... Did you say 10 is your youngest? 10 is the youngest and 18 and the eldest. So from 10 to 18. So you've got a lot of stages happening there. So we know that life just comes at you no matter what your plans might be. That's the way life is. So so here you were at the beginning of 2022 setting a list of intentions on LA Mom Magazine website. So tell me your motivation about uh, creating and listing your five intentions. 
Oh my goodness. Well, I think it's so important that all of us always have resolutions at the beginning of the year. I don't really believe in resolutions, but I do believe in intentions because we control our actions, right? And our mind controls us. And so I've been reading a lot of Joe Dispenza. I don't know if any of you are familiar with him, but if you're not, download his book on Audible and just listen to it when you're in the car or running on the treadmill. He has a wealth of knowledge and he really was a huge factor in, in how I kind of thought about my intentions for the year. I actually pulled it up here because I can't remember all the details of everything I've written down. But the one thing I learned listening to Joe Dispenza is that your behavior has to match your intentions, right? So you can't set an intention saying, I want to lose 20 pounds and then go eat like a a Twinkie, right? That's not going to work. No. And and you think, oh, well, that's just so natural. Of course not. But if you're not thinking about that, right? Like what's your objective here? How are you going to get there? You've got to have a plan. And so I just decided for myself this year, like I think a lot of us as human beings in this world who are high achievers, we tend to take on a lot. And when we take on a lot, sometimes we're just like, oh, we'll do it all. But if we don't think, wait a minute, what's my objective here? How am I going to get there? None of it gets done. And so I've decided that this year I am going to think in that manner. So I take on like one project at a time rather than kind of saying yes to everything and taking on a million things at a time. It just doesn't work. So that's my first your thoughts become your reality, right? That's huge. We know that. Mm -hmm. We have to take ownership and control of the thoughts in our mind. Some of us do it through meditation. Mm -hmm. Some of us do it through podcasts. There are so many different ways now. We have so many resources at our fingertips, like your incredible podcast, where you bring in so many people who really help us figure out how to get these crazy thoughts out of our head, right? And to live in the present. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's another huge one. The past is the past. All of us have things in our past that can torment us. And I always tell my girls this. I said, forgive, don't forget. Because if you forget, you can't grow from it. And we want to grow from the things that happened in our past, but we don't want to live in the past. And so I'm really being mindful this year of letting go. The past is the past. Don't forget what happened, learn from it, but just move forward, right? Let's not yes. live in the past because we cannot be present. And we can't move forward if we do that. So I'm trying to let go of all of that. And then I'm, I come back always to the, my inner voice again, that your, your inner voice with all its fears and doubts isn't you, right? Your true self observes your thoughts. This is The Untethered Soul, who, which is an incredible book. If, if you haven't oh, yeah. read it, I highly recommend it by Michael Singer. I um, I do a lot of Audible these days because I feel like I get through books a lot faster. Mm-hmm. And he takes you through all these exercises on how to really release, right? Because again, so many of us are just like boggled down by these thoughts in our inner voice. Well, why don't we just change our narrative then? Why don't we make that inner voice a positive voice? Mm. But change the narrative. And his book is a, is a great way to start. If you're interested in it, I highly recommend it. And the last one is that you have infinite access to your spiritual energy. I mean, we know the world is made up of energy. There's a reason why some of us are attracted to each other and some of us just don't care for each other so much, right? Mm -hmm. But I think if we all open our hearts to love, we'll see a huge difference in the way that that we feel every single day. And so that's a huge one. And I talk to my girls a lot about it. Just open your heart, open your chakras, open yourself to love, especially as teenage girls in my house who are so hurt by what they see online or by other Mm. girls at school, or, you know, there can be so many things that go on, but if, you know, they have nothing to do with how you feel and your love. And if you open your heart, it really doesn't matter what they say or what they post or what they do. And so I feel like the only way to really help my family and myself is to live it right. Be that example. And hopefully I'll spread all that goodness and all that good energy out to, to everyone else in my circle. Katrina and I love the fact that you made such a distinction between resolutions and intentions. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so for our audience, I just want to recap these because Katrina has a question for you next, but I just want to recap these so you didn't miss them. And you can see all these on LA Mom Magazine website. So number one, your behavior has to match your intentions. Number two, your thoughts become your reality. Number three, the past is the past. Number four, your inner voice with all its fears and doubts isn't you That's pretty <laughs> eye-opening and number yes. five you have infinite access to spiritual energy i got all those correct right Sharon? you got them perfectly Beautiful. well done oh i love those wow 
I just want to sit in those for a second. So how did it go for you with, I mean, have you felt you've slipped up? I mean, we all slip up a little bit, right? So of course. is there, is there any example of that that you want to share? It's, it's okay if you don't, like, I don't know. No, if absolutely. Anything. I think how we say your, your inner voice with all its fears and doubts isn't you. I think that's something that I'm constantly struggling with as a woman and a wife and a mother. If someone feels like they, they don't face that, I'd love to know how you got there. There, please text, <laughs> call, or message me because yes. I am constantly doubting myself, okay. but at least I'm catching myself now, right? So when yes. that doubt comes in, I am like mindful of that voice. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're doing great. Are you kidding me? You're rocking it. You're good. <laughs> and so I think if we're not mindful of it, that voice can take over, right? And Absolutely. then you can get to a really bad place. And I'm so cognizant of that because I'm a mother of four girls. And mm-hmm. as women, we do this to ourselves. We're mm-hmm. never good enough. Yeah. We're never good enough. I mean, no matter what we do, you know, you could be you could be on top of the world as, as we all are. We're doing such great things in the world, but still there's that self-doubt. So, mm-hmm. so that is one aspect for me that I'm constantly, constantly working on. And I think I'll work on it until the day I die. Right. And, and, that's, and that, yeah, that's what humanity is for sure. No Go kidding. Jefferson. And Sharon, I just wanted to say that in therapy and Katrina and I discussed my therapy sessions, but one of the things that uh, I learned is thought challenge. It was in like a class for self-care. And just because you have the thought doesn't mean the thought has to rule the day. Is this kind of what you're saying? So you can challenge a thought and say, I don't think I want to believe that. Yeah, that's right. I like that. And right. I was I was trying to I actually spoke with someone who is a sleep therapist last week and she said, OK, and I, I kind of fall asleep easily. But then I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, why are you? I'm ready to go. And she said, well, you know, just when you have a thought and let's say it's a thought about something you are stressing about, just say, you know, re, you know, name the thought and then move on from it. So maybe like in the day you have a thought that's not really great. She said by naming that thought and say, oh, I get that. That's kind of a dark thought or that's a stressful thought. That's that. I don't need to deal with a stressful thought right now. You know, it's another right. way of kind of like saying, I know who you are, but you aren't part. I don't need you right now. So I like that because that's all part of being intentional and, and we're all human and we can't do that perfectly every day. But to know those, I'm going to go write those down and put them on my mirror. Okay, Sharon. And those things are going to be on my that. mirror now. Uh, so that. thank you for that. And it, you know, you you do so many wonderful things. Everything you've said has been so like concise and well thought out. I appreciate it. And it's just wonderful that you created LA Mom Magazine. You saw a need and you filled it. And you're you're helping so many parents with that. And in that spirit, you also find time to give back in other ways. Can you touch on a few of those ways you like to give back? Sure. So right now, my my biggest passion lies in an organization called WIZO. It's the Women's International Zionist Organization. They have been helping women and children in Israel for over 100 years. They are the biggest nonprofit after the government. They give more to help women and children than any other organization. We have been bringing in dozens of Ukrainian refugee children, housing them, feeding them, educating them. It is not easy. Their fathers are at war. Many of them have lost their fathers. Some of them have lost their mothers. Their mothers are back home trying to get their things in order and come. And so these children have been coming in alone. And there is like all of these different WIZO centers set up in Israel. And we, I just feel so passionate about it because I was, you know, We just celebrated Passover last month. We're all sitting at the Seder table. We're celebrating our freedoms. And it really just, all of us took a moment in silence to just say, wow, we might be free, but so many people in the world are still enslaved and are not living in that freedom. And so if we can all do something that's relevant today to help our communities all over the world, you know, it's the least we can do. So that's really something that that we feel very passionate about. Shiro Rise is an incredible organization locally. Really, really, if you want to get your feet wet, if you have the time and you can monetarily help, you can sponsor a young girl who doesn't have, you know, we were talking about Mother's Day, who doesn't have a mother or a role model or somebody in their lives, well, you can be that somebody in their lives to really help them and both financially, emotionally, spiritually in every way. So those are my two favorite for now that I I really feel passionate that is is making a difference in the world. Wow. I know that is just so inspiring. So I don't know if you guys remember this old commercial. It was an Irish spring commercial. 
And it was like, manly, yes, but ladies like it too. I'm reversing <laughs> I'm reversing that and saying, this is lady wisdom, but men like it too. I feel like I'm getting so much awesome wisdom. So uh, speaking as a dad, as a man, Katrina likes this question, by the way. What can dads do to encourage <laughs> the moms in their life? Mm. I think you should interview my husband for that because he's Ooh. great at that. I'm very lucky. Very, very lucky. Wait a minute. Have... Wait a minute. Did he set the bar so high? We're all going to feel like garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I think it's all attainable, right? He he actually is a very spiritual person. So I think that men who are also setting their intentions and looking within know that happy wife, happy life, right? So any smart man will know that if you take care of your wife, you will have a happy life. And so <laughs> my husband is just smart enough to know that. And so he has really said, you know what? This is your home. You gave up your career for so many years. This is your home. This is your office. Do with it as you wish. And I'm here to support you. And he may not always really take a back seat. I mean, we're doing this together, but he at least makes me feel like I'm the driving force and making the decisions at home for our family in that sense, where he is kind of financially making sure that we're taken care of. He allows me to emotionally and spiritually make sure that we are taken care of. So I think it's a partnership. And I think that the father or the partner in your house needs to be a partner to support you in any way possible. So for me, it's let me take care of my domain. And he's like, yeah, I'll take care of mine. And it works. And by the way, something that I love, love that I want to share with you is that my husband puts me first before the kids. So dads out there, make your wife or your partner feel like they are more important than the kids. Because when the two of you are together and you are vibing, everything else in the house kind of runs really smoothly. We make sure once a month we have a staycation for a night somewhere or go out of town so that our romance is still hot and sizzly, which makes us better parents. So if I had one takeaway, I would say dads, put your wife or partner first and make them feel like the queen of your household. That is Awesome. I'm and I'm going to run out and get a tiara after yeah. we're done. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, you better, Jefferson, for sure. And I just want to give a shout out to my hubby, who's so amazing, Ken Carlson, who produces all these podcasts and is always just amazingly supportive of, of me and our family. And yeah, very blessed as well. So that is wonderful to hear your witness to that in your life. And it's very evident when anyone meets you and your hubby. You guys are amazing. You had us for dinner one night and it was just so evident. I'm so impressed by the spirit in your home. You really do walk the walk that you talk, you know, it's amazing. So for our audience, you know, you are a super credible resource, a super credible human being who really does do what you say. And for those who are listening or watching right now on YouTube, what kind of takeaway would you like people to have from this conversation? Firstly, I want to say that Katrina, you are incredible and you're an incredible mom and an incredible wife. And I have always looked up to you because your kids are older than mine. And so you have set the bar at a place where everyone has aspired to be like you and your husband. Oh and I really do feel very honored to be here today. So I, I wanted to let you know that. Thank you so much. It's the truth. And you, my dear, I will get to know you, I think. And I'm sure you're a wonderful father as well. Yeah, he is. Well, uh, well uh, yes. okay. Yes. Me? Oh, me? <laughs> Oh, thanks. Um, yes. So my, my biggest takeaway would be to love yourself, because if you love yourself first, you can love your partner and your children and your community, and you can give back in such an authentic, viable way. If you don't love yourself, I don't think you're going to be able to do good for the world and be the mother that you want to be. So I think first and foremost, love yourself. That is really the biggest takeaway. Thank I you. love that. Thank wow. You for that. So let me just take this opportunity to say to my beautiful wife and my mother-in-law, 92 mm. year old mother-in-law, happy wow. Mother's Day to two incredible women, strong, mm. intelligent. And I do try to support them in every way I can. You're right. Happy wife, happy life. That is my motto. It I is. Think I'm going to get a tattoo. I've that. heard you say it many times. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Sharin, for members of our crazy, amazing humans community, if they wanted to follow you, and why wouldn't they, how, how can they do that? 
So you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at LA Mom Magazine. And you can go online and subscribe. Everything is free to my website, lamommagazine.com. We send out weekly inspiration, expertise, quotes, things to just make your life better and sustainable and filled with love and good energy. Ooh, I love it. Let's do it. So Sharin Yadigar, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for sharing your courageous spirit, your expertise, your insights with candor and authenticity. Amazing. You are indeed crazy amazing. Mother is Johnny. Mother is home. Mother is my own. Mother a storm. Catch you when you fall, help you to stand up tall, give you a sweater, kiss and make it better. is our show. Just sending big love and a big thank you to Sharin Yadigar. Those were some awesome insights into how to be the best parent one can be. I am definitely going to paste some of that up on my mirror and remember those helpful hints. And thank you also, Sharin, for raising such amazing girls, being a crazy, amazing human, and a wonderful friend to me. Thank you, Sharin. And by the way, dear audience, you just heard a brief clip of Katrina's song, Mother. Please make sure and go to YouTube to be able to listen to it in its entirety. The the video is really awesome. Well, thank you, Jefferson. And if you've enjoyed today's episode and you think it would be meaningful and helpful for someone you know, be a crazy, amazing human and let them know about us. A couple of quick reminders, make sure to subscribe to the Crazy Amazing Humans podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And we've also filmed the podcasts, so you can check us out on the Crazy Amazing Humans YouTube channel. And make sure and leave comments. We love to hear what you're thinking. Absolutely. And most of all, we want to make sure to thank you for being here with us today. And we want you to remember that every little kindness has the potential to create crazy, amazing human experience one person at a time. And as always, this week, we want to encourage you to find one thing that you can do to extend kindness and love in the world. I'm Jefferson Denham. And I'm Katrina Carlson. Stay healthy, stay connected, and we will see you next time right here on the Crazy Amazing Humans podcast. If you have any questions or comments about today's episode, please make sure to write us at crazyamazinghumans at gmail.com.